What exactly is a day out event? Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. So the Daytona Beach Amateur Radio Association is going to be hosting a day out event at Hamcation this year. Now exactly what is a day out event? A day out event is the brainchild of Mr. Bob Bruniga, the father of APRS. And it's a way that we can create an ad hoc network using the APRS protocol. And per Bob, this is great for large events or disasters. It allows us to focus on those that are at the event or the disaster while eliminating all of the noise that's normally on the APRS frequency, therefore cutting out all of the unrelated traffic so we can solely focus on those that are at the event. Now, you guys all know that I'm a huge fan of APRS, so when they mentioned this to me, I was all in. And I would love it if you guys would participate as well if you're coming to Hamcation. Now, I'm going to cover the basics here in just a second, and then I'm going to show you how to configure both a Yezu and a Kenwood radio. You can also configure this with uh, APRS Droid and even the VGC radio uh, and the, uh, what's the sister radio to that? The BTEC UV Pro. So you can basically use any APRS radio that you want to or use APRS Droid connected to another radio and do all of this. So it's, uh, it's not too terribly complicated, but there are a few settings we need to change. Now, if you've been around APRS for very long, you've probably heard terms like wide 1-1 or wide 2-1. Those are the paths that an APRS packet can take, and those numbers dictate how many hops or how far out your packet is going to be heard. Well, for the day out event, we don't use the wide nomenclature. Instead, we're going to use temp. 1.1. So we need to make that change in the radio and the frequency change in the radio. Those are the only two settings you'll have to change on your end. Everything else is handled by the Digipeter, and that's what the Daytona Beach Amateur Radio Association is going to take care of. They will be running the Digipeter on a Kenwood D75, and it's pretty cool that this radio can handle all of that. So, we won't get in too technical on the back end of things and the way you would configure a Digipeter for this. All we want to focus on is getting your radio program for this so you can participate if you're coming to Hamcation. All right, so first up, let's take a look at the Yezu FT5 and how we're going to program this for the day out event. The first thing we need to do is change the frequency. We're not going to use 144.390. We're actually going to use 147.585. So I'll go ahead and get that keyed into the radio first. You'll notice I've got the A12 flashing right here, and then I've got the open circle just to the left of that. That A12 tells me that I'm using the 1200 baud modem, and the circle tells me that I'm using smart beaconing. Uh, for uh, beaconing out my APRS packets. Next thing we need to do is press and hold the F menu button. That's going to bring you into the menu. And we're going to go ahead and go into APRS. And then we're going to come down here to uh, item number 18, the Digi Path. So that's that path that I was telling you guys about. Now, right now, I am currently sitting on P3. We've got eight different options that we can look at here. Let's take a look at the way you were probably running your radio just like I am, and you'll see the addresses of wide 11 and wide 21 inside uh, this path. Instead of using that, I'm going to go over to, let's see what uh, P4 looks like. Hey, Editor Jason here. Uh, in this next clip, you're going to see me talk about temp 11 and wide 1-1. The wide 1-1 one one is absolutely not needed for this event, so all you really need to get in there is the temp 1-1. And we'll go over to it and take a look at it. And you'll notice that I've got that temp 1-1 one one and wide 1-1 one one as the address too. This is what we want to use for the configuration of the path. That way the day out digipeter is going to see that temp 1-1 one one and digipeat 
your packet every time your radio transmits. That will also apply to messages and bulletins. So that's the way you set up the radio, uh, the FT5 radio for this event. So we'll just leave it right there. You see that P4 is selected and we can come all the way back out. Now, if your P4 doesn't have, uh, let's see if I can find an empty one here. I'm gonna just go down to P8 for this example. If yours doesn't have anything in here, you are going to have to click into those address one and two and go ahead and put in that temp one one and wide one one. Now, taking a look at the Kenwood D75, we need to do the same two things, though it is a bit different. So the first thing we're going to do is change that frequency. So I'll, once again, I'm going to put in 147.585, and that takes care of our frequency. You will need to make sure that your APRS 12 is on, and right now I've got beaconing cut off on my radio. You do want to turn on beaconing so that your radio will beacon as well. In the main menu, you want to choose APRS, which is right there in the center. And then we're going to take a look at basic settings. So under basic settings, of course, you got your call sign and icon and other things there. But we want to come down to right here where it says packet path. And you'll notice mine is on that new dash in setting right now. And this is the way that I typically run this radio as well. I'm going a total of two hops with that wide one one and wide two one. Let's see, I never can remember, it's not that one. You're gonna press the down arrow on uh, the radio and we'll just take a look at this others three. On that others three, let's go ahead and press enter. That's gonna move us down to the path and let's press enter one more time. Here, we need to type in that temp one one path. Once you've typed in that temp one one, go ahead and press enter. That'll take you back to this screen. I believe we press uh, the left side of the D-pad. That'll take us back up to where Others 3 is highlighted. And now we want to click the uh, dual AB button right here, which will set this one to be used. You should get that used button right up here in the top uh, along that Others 3. And that's it. It's that easy to get this one programmed. Now, don't forget when you get back home to go ahead and uh, redo this so that it's using your normal settings. But that's all you've got to do to get started and get ready for the day out event at Hamcation. So why do we want to do something like this? Well, it's all about experimenting. Again, this was something that Bruniga put out uh, in a, a web page, and I'm going to leave a link to that down in the description below. But it's always about experimenting. That's what our license allows us to do, and I'm all about any experimentation that we can take out into the field and play with. You never know when this might come in handy for a future event, and if you participate in this one, you're going to have a lot better understanding of exactly how it works. Guys, if you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.